Then came the morning that sealed the promise. Your buried body began to breathe out of the sand. Oh, the 
Good morning, everyone. My name is Amy Ryan, and on behalf of the Parish of St. Ignatius of Loyola, I'm really pleased to welcome you here to our Easter Sunday celebration. Our Lord Jesus has conquered death through his resurrection, and we're here this morning to praise, worship, and glorify him, and for all that he has done for us. I especially want to welcome our Camino candidates who are going to be baptized and confirmed today and of course their families and sponsors who are here with them. We ask that family and friends, if you want to take pictures throughout the celebration, you're welcome to do so, but we ask that you stay in your seats. And um, a reminder to everybody who's here in the church with us today, that you must keep your throughout the service. If you feel you need to take a break, feel free to go to the back of the church, step outside, take your mask off, gulp that fresh air, and then replace your mask before coming in. Since the start of the pandemic, the health and safety of our parish, our parishioners, has really been our priority. And for this reason, I want you, everyone to know that we've taken all of the necessary precautions so that today's baptisms and confirmations are gonna ensure the safety of our candidates, the sponsors, and as well as our clergy. I wanna thank everybody who's joining online today, um, especially those of you who may have clicked on for the first time. Uh, we're so glad to have you here for our Easter celebration. Uh, feel free to mention in the chat where you're from, and if that chat is annoying, feel free to shut it off. Today could not have been possible without the huge number of volunteers. Everybody within the parish that has worked behind the scenes tirelessly over the last and months to, to ensure our celebration comes together today and that we are um, able to welcome you safely into our parish, as well as the people that have worked behind the scenes with our Camino candidates. Thank you to everyone. Thank you to our live stream crew. Thank you to our worship band, Katya, Tyler, Jose, and Pat. Um, thank you to our elector, Rob. Thank you, everyone. It, it really, we enjoy doing this and uh, it is, it is great to allow us to serve and to welcome you in this way. As we go through the Mass, you're going to see the responses to the prayers as well as the lyrics to the music on your screens. Um, unfortunately, please remember if you're in the church, we cannot yet sing out loud. So we welcome you to, to say the responses, but please don't sing. We ask those of you at home to please sing on our behalf. So, you know, rock it out at home. Please sing, sing the praises of God. 
Um, and if you're at home, you're going to see the stand, kneel, sit. If you're comfortable doing that, great. If you feel like you just want to sit and enjoy the service, that's fine too. Um, just sit back and enjoy the Mass. Today, Father Mike will be the celebrant, and he will be assisted by Deacon Marco. And now, I invite you to open your hearts to our Lord as we begin this Easter celebration. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Christos Adesti. Alethos Adesti. I got a little bit of a response. Last year, I tried to get that going. I tried to make that a thing last year. That's what the, that's how Greek people, uh, Greek Orthodox, that's how they greet, themselves, uh, greet one another in, in Easter, uh, the Easter season. Tried to get it going last year. Eh, okay. I still got work to do. Welcome, everyone. Thank you very much uh, for joining with us. Thank you at home for allowing us into your home. It's a, it's a privilege and an honor to be there, uh, to be with you today. I want to welcome especially our, uh, our guests, um, our Camino, those, those uh, men and women who are going to be baptized, received into the church today, their sponsors, their, their families who have joined us as well. Thank you uh, so much for, for your yes for saying yes to, to the God's call in your life. And, uh, and thank you as well to the family and, and sponsors who have been a support for them this, uh, through this whole journey. For those of you at home, I wanna, and I'm gonna ask you to, uh, to keep these, these men and women in your prayers. These uh, men and women who are gonna be baptized and, and confirmed and have their first communion uh, today. To, to keep them in your prayers, to everyone here to please keep them in your prayers throughout the Mass uh, the, the, this, this morning. And as we begin this celebration, this celebration of the risen Lord's gift of his very self to us, let's take a moment to recognize that we are in need of his mercy, his love, and his forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, 
in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. God, who on this day through your only begotten Son have conquered death and unlocked for us the path to eternity, grant, we pray, that we who keep the solemnity of the, of the Lord's resurrection may through the renewal brought by your Spirit rise up in the light of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter began to speak. You know the message that spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all people, but to us 
who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him, that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, if you have been raised with Christ, seek things that are above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth, for you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, is revealed, then you also will be revealed with him. In glory. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb. I do not know where they had laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went towards the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrapping lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrapping lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrapping, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in and saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes, but Mary Magdalene stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she, she bent over to look into the tomb and she saw two angels in white sitting there where the body of Jesus had been laying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there. But she did not know that it was Jesus. And Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. And Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabuni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The cathedral at Chartres, France, is one of the most beautiful and, and famous Gothic-style cathedrals in Europe. From the outside, it looks impressive. It, it, it towers over the rest of the landscape. And it has two large spires in the front. It has lots of statues and carvings in the, in the stone. Lots of windows. It, it is truly impressive, especially when you consider it was completed 800 years ago in 1220. But as impressive as it is from the outside, the true beauty of the cathedral is on the inside. Inside is where the incredible stained glass windows can be seen in all of their glory. Inside is, is where the history of salvation is told in the images in that, that glass. Inside is where the wonder and awe that comes from walking through this building is truly experienced. When I went to, to visit Chartres, it was a, a dark, rainy day in, in October a few years ago. And as, I, and as I walked toward it, it, it was impressive. But the intense grayness of the stone was also a little foreboding against the gloomy sky. Yet as I walked inside the doors, it was as if the world outside was shut away 
and a new day was now upon me. The bright, vivid colors in the glass, the intricate details that tie the whole thing together, the, it made sense to me now when I was on the inside. It made sense why people have come to this place for centuries to experience its beauty and have come away marked forever. I think of Easter a little bit the same way. From outside the tomb, it's impressive, but it's also confusing and foreboding. It's impressive that the large rock has been moved. It's, it's foreboding that the tomb is now empty. It's chaotic in that the linens are strewn about. Mary Magdalene first sees the tomb from the outside and she runs off in a frenzy. She doesn't yet go in. She runs off to tell the others. Peter and John emerge from, from their lockdown to go and see. They run from the locked room where the disciples were hiding out in fear and, and, and defeat and loss. But Peter and John, when they get there, they go into the tomb. And from the inside, we start to recognize something wonderful. From inside, Peter goes in first and then John, and it starts to dawn on them that something wonderful has happened. John is speaking of himself in the gospel today when he says, and he saw and believed. They start to see order amidst the chaos. They start to see the victory that is coming out of defeat. They start to see the beautiful ending to what seemed to be this tragic story of loss and suffering. They start to see meaning where our, only hours ago they experienced despair. I think we have to enter the tomb as well. We have to acknowledge and recognize the pain and the suffering and the loss that we've had all this past year. We can't just gloss over it. We can't pretend it didn't happen because, because it is often in that loss and sacrifice and suffering that we can discover the risen Lord. It's often in the confusion and mess of our lives, maybe even the despair that we felt at times during this past year, that we can often find hope in Jesus's resurrection. And it's right in that fear and loss and lockdown that Jesus will first appear to the disciples. It's when it's Mary go, looking into the tomb, seeing it inside where she sees the angels first appear to her. It's there that she first encounters Jesus. Soon we will hear that Jesus will appear in the locked room amidst the despair and the confusion. And the very first thing that he will say to them is peace be with you. Because that's what Jesus does. He comes right down into us in all of our emptiness, all of our mess, our fears. He comes into our suffering and our loss. And by his love and his sacrifice, he turns all of it into the most incredible victory, and he brings peace. In some way, shape, or form, we have lost something this past year. In some, some way, shape, or form, we are dealing with confusion and stress and chaos. And yet, in some way, shape, or form, at Easter, we realize by entering into the tomb that Jesus has conquered all of it even death itself. In Easter, we realize that Jesus transforms loss into victory, that he brings peace in the midst of chaos. Today, in a few moments, we're going to be baptizing six adults. We're going to be receiving another into the church. And we have another person waiting in the U.S. for our border to open so that she too can come and receive the sacraments. Eight people in total who have journeyed with us all this year, all this pandemic year, to come to this day when they will enter into the church, into our parish of St. Ignatius, into this Chat Cathedral, if you will. And I hope and pray that they will find it as wonderful and transforming 
and, and full of life and fill them with meaning and hope as, as I have. I hope and pray that, that from the inside, it will fill them, fill them with joy and peace as they receive an outpouring of Jesus' Holy Spirit through baptism and confirmation and Holy Communion. These are eight men and women who have lived, been living the same kind of things that all of you have. All of you at home have been living the same kind of stresses as these men and women have. All the chaos and the confusion, the stress, the loss. These are eight people who have had at various times and in various ways encountered like the disciples, they've encountered Jesus and they have seen and believed. They have seen and believed the risen Lord. These men and women can tell you that the pandemic has been hard, that there's been loss and suffering. One of them has had to face cancer this past year. But they can also tell you that in the midst of all of it, they have found peace and strength and resilience in their growing faith in Jesus Christ. Today, today I rejoice and celebrate Christ's victory over death in our midst, but I also celebrate these men and women who have said yes to Jesus, who have said yes, who have said they have seen and believed. And they are entering into our church. They are entering into Christ's victory. Five years ago, five years ago, I witnessed people being baptized at Easter. Men and women who've had their life changed and made better by an encounter with Jesus and wanted to be fully part of, of Jesus's church. They wanted to receive the sacraments of grace and healing and hope. And it was so joyful and moving for, for me to see this new life in Jesus Christ. The problem was, I was in Halifax at the time. I wasn't here at my home, at my family, at St. Ignatius. The problem was, when I called our parish afterwards, we realized that we hadn't had an adult baptism since 1978. I was convinced that we had to do something different. Jesus tells his disciples at the Last Supper, you did not choose me, but I chose you. And I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. So that the Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. So I decided to take Jesus seriously. To not just believe in Jesus, but to believe Jesus when he says that. I wanted to go and bear fruit. And so I asked the father to help me bring new life into our parish. I asked the father, I said, I don't want to go another Easter at St. Ignatius without baptizing people into the new life with Jesus. And since that moment, God has been so, so good. Not a year has gone by without that very thing happening in our church. Even in this horrible pandemic, when so much has been put on hold and shut down, when so many churches have been put on hold and shut down, Jesus, the resurrected Jesus, has continued to touch lives, to draw people to him. And we have been able to continue to help bring men and women to enter into this new life in Christ. We've been so, so blessed. Deacon Marco, Deacon Marco had a grandson this week. It's his second grandchild. This time it's, it's his youngest, his, his baby girl, Ali. He, he always refers to as my baby girl. His baby girl had a baby boy. And mazel tov, Marco. And, and I know Marco well enough to tell you that having another grandchild does not make him feel old. It makes him feel proud and joyful and young and vital. That's what new life does. New life brings joy, hope, vitality, and life. That's, 
what new life in a parish does. That's what new life in Christ does. It brings hope and joy and resilience in the midst of these, these, these horrible months that we've been living through. It brings joy into a time when it's hard to find. It brings, it brings it to these folks who are going to be baptized, even in the struggles they've gone through this year. And it, and it brings that joy and hope to us, to our parish here at St. Ignatius, even in all the struggles that we faced this year. This is great news, folks. God is with us. Christos Anesti, the Christ is risen. He is truly risen. And so right here, I'm going to ask, I'm going to ask the Father, like Jesus said, ask the Father and he will give you what you need. So Father, I'm asking, I'm asking for your help right now. I'm asking for like the prophet Elisha, who asked for a double dose of your spirit, I'm asking for a doubling of the number of people we bring into your church next year. Father, I want to bear even more fruit. And so I want to double the number of men and women we baptize, that we receive into your church, into the sacraments. Father, I want to double the fruit we bear for you. I want to double the number of people we bring to new life in your son, Jesus, next year. After a year of lockdown and closing our doors, after a year of making decisions on the fly and having to pivot so much and so fast that we're, I'm, I'm dizzy half the time. After a year of feeling at times that this empty cavernous building it can seem like a huge empty tomb. We get to see new life enter into our tomb. We get to be witnesses to Jesus calling these men and women by name, just like he did to Mary Magdalene. We get to see new life in baptizing. In baptizing these men and women into Christ Jesus. I know that, it, that at some point during this whole thing today, I'm going to start crying because that's what I do. But they're tears of joy because I am so proud of them, of what we've done to bring them to this day. And I'm so joyful and full of hope for our family. I know that Christ is risen because I see it in you. I know he is truly risen because I see it year after year in the men and women we've been able to bring into this, this full relationship with Jesus. And so in the midst of the stress and the anxiety of this particular year, amidst the confusion and the chaos and all the disappointments that we faced, let's recognize that yes, the tomb is indeed empty. And let's also recognize that with new life in Jesus, we don't stay empty. Our hearts become full, full of joy and hope, and yes, full of Christ's peace. It is with great privilege and honor for me to call forward our catechumenants for baptism. I call forward Rachel Young, Sebastian Rivera, Jeff Rose, 
Amal Cancel, Elise Rakusha, and Celine Irvin with their candidate with their sponsors. Jeff, Elisa, Amal, Sebastian, Rachel, Celine. In a few moments, you will be baptized into the church, the body of Christ. And this may seem like the culmination of a great journey, and in some ways it is. But it's actually the beginning of something new and exciting. God has been at work in your lives since you were born. Since he formed you in your mother's womb, it says in the prophet Ezekiel. Sorry, I'm trying to remember that. <laughs> it's in Ezekiel, he says, I formed you in my mother's womb. Let us give thanks to God for that. Let us give thanks for that call that he has placed in you. And let us give thanks and rejoice that you have responded generously to that call. But let us also recognize that this is actually the beginning of something more. Let us pray to Almighty God, who has called you to this moment, that he grants you the light and strength to profess your faith and find fulfillment in following Jesus with joy. Now, just hold the book for me, Emma, please. Almighty ever-living God, be present by the mysteries of your great love and send forth the spirit of adoption to create the new peoples brought to birth by you in the font of baptism. So that what is to be carried out by our humble service may be brought to fulfillment by your mighty power. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And so, Celine and Rachel, Sebastian, Amal, Eliza, Jeff, of your own free will, you have been asked, you have asked to be baptized into the Catholic Church. You have made your decision after care, careful thought and under the guidance of the Holy Spirit. I now invite you to profess the faith in front of our community. In this faith, you will be confirmed and be one with us for the first time at the Eucharistic table. The Eucharistic table of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is the sign of the church's unity. And so I ask you, do you renounce sin so as to live in the freedom of the children of God? Do you renounce the lure of evil so that sin may have no mastery over you? Do you renounce Satan, author and prince of sin? So now we're going to come and anoint each of you on your hands with the oil of catechumens. Jeff, we anoint you with the oil of salvation in the name of Christ, our Savior. May he strengthen you with his power who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Eliza, we anoint you with the oil of salvation in the name of Christ, our Savior. May he strengthen you with his power who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. 
Amal, we anoint you with the oil of salvation in the name of Christ our Savior. May he strengthen you with his power who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Sebastian, we anoint you with the oil of salvation in the name of Christ our Savior. May he strengthen you with his power who lives and reigns forever and ever. Rachel, we anoint you with the oil of salvation in the name of Christ, our Savior. May he strengthen you with his power who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Celine, we anoint you with the oil of salvation in the name of Christ, our Savior. May he strengthen you with his power who lives and reigns forever and ever. You can rub it, uh, rub it into your hands if you want a little bit. It's just olive oil <laughs> that's been olive oil that was blessed by the Archbishop on Wednesday night. And so now I ask you: Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? This is our faith. This is the, the faith. It's, Catholic Church, as Christians, and we are proud to profess it in Christ Jesus our Lord. So now I'll invite you to come up one by one to be baptized. Jeff, I baptize you. Baptized. I baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the. Congratulations. Elisa. Lisa, I baptize you. I baptize you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Congratulations, Lisa. Gonna need an extra towel there. Amal, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Congratulations.
Ooh, I need some more water. Sebastian, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Congrats. <laughs> you want to take off your mask? Uh, Rachel? Rachel, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Congratulations. Celine. Celine, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Congratulations. My dear, I'm missing someone. Who am I missing? Oh, Celine. Okay. <laughs> My brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ. You have put on Christ, symbolized by this all. And so we ask that you receive this baptismal garment and bring it unstained to the judgment seat of our Lord Jesus Christ so that you may have everlasting life. Amen. Now I'll invite the sponsors to come up and to receive the baptismal candle. My brothers and sisters, you have been enlightened by Christ. Walk always as children of the light and keep the flame of faith alive in your hearts. When the Lord comes, may you go out to meet him with all the saints in the heavenly kingdom. Amen. Okay, you can return to your seats. Keep the, the candles lit and return to your seats uh, for, a mo for a moment.
I now invite our candidate for confirmation, Linda, to come forward with her sponsor. Linda, of your own free will, and by the grace of God, you have asked to be received into full communion in the Catholic Church. And so I invite you to please repeat after me. I believe and profess, I believe and profess all that the Holy Catholic Church, Holy Catholic Church believes, teaches, and proclaims to be revealed by God. Linda, the Lord receives you into the Catholic Church. His loving kindness has led you here so that in the unity of the Holy Spirit, you may have full communion with us in the faith that you, have, that you will profess in the presence of his family. And so now I'll invite everyone, well, the, uh, sorry, the sponsors to please stand. My dear brothers and sisters, through the Paschal mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism so that we may walk with him in newness of life. And so now that our Lenten observance is concluded, let us, all of us, all of us gathered at home, all of us gathered here who are Christian, let us, along with Linda, Renew the promises of our baptism, by which we once renounced Satan and his works, and which we promised to serve God in the Holy Catholic Church. And so I ask you, Linda, the sponsors, and all here present, do you renounce sin so as to live in the freedom of the children of God? I do. Do you renounce the lure of evil so that sin may have no mastery over you? I do. Do you renounce Satan, the author and prince of sin? I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection, the body, and life everlasting? I do. This is our faith. This is the faith of the church, and we are proud to profess it with you, Linda. And may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed on us forgiveness of our sins, Keep us by his grace in Christ Jesus, our Lord, forever and ever. Amen. So I'll invite everyone to please stand. We're going to come through, and as a sign of that renewal of our baptism, we're going to sprinkle everyone with holy water. It's going to get wet. Take off your glasses. Christians praise the Paschal victim, offer thankful sacrifice. Christ the Lamb has saved the sheep, Christ the just one paid the price. Reconciling sinners to the Father, death and life fought bitterly, for this wondrous victory, 
the Lord of life who died reigns glorified. O Mary, come and say what you saw at break of day. The empty tomb of my living Lord, I saw Christ Jesus risen and adored. Bright angels testified, shroud and grave cloth side by side. Yes, Christ, my hope, rose gloriously. He goes before you into Galilee. Share the good news, sing joyfully. His death is victory. Lord Jesus, Victor King, show us mercy. Right now, the candidates are, are neophytes and newly baptized to come forward with a candidate for sacrament of confirmation. So, my dear candidates for confirmation, my new brothers and sisters in Jesus, by your baptism, you have been born again in Christ and have become members of our Lord and of his priestly people. Now, you are to share in the outpouring of the Holy Spirit among us, the Spirit sent by the Lord upon his apostles at Pentecost and given to them and their successors to be baptized. The promised strength of the Holy Spirit, which you are about to receive, will make you more like Christ and help you to be witnesses to his suffering, death, and resurrection. It will strengthen you. It will strengthen you to be active members of the church and to build up the body of Christ in faith and love. So Marco, if you'd like to join me. My dear friends, let us pray to our Father that he will pour out the Holy Spirit to strengthen his sons and daughters with his gifts and anoint them to be more like Christ, the Son of God. All-powerful, ever-living God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, by water and the Holy Spirit, you freed your sons and daughters from sin and gave them new life. Send your Holy Spirit upon these children of yours to be their helper and guide. Give them the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of right judgment and courage, the spirit of knowledge and reverence. Fill them with the spirit of wonder and awe in your presence. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. So now I'm going to come, uh, as I did before, anointing you this time on the forehead with the, uh, with the chrism oil. Jeff, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. 
Peace be with you. Lisa, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Linda, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Amal, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. With your spirit. Sebastian, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Rachel, be sealed with the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Celine, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Brothers and sisters, congratulations. You have been fully confirmed, baptized, and in a few moments you will receive the Holy, the Holy Eucharist for the very first time. You are now welcome to join us at the table of Christ. Congratulations. <laughs> Turn around so people can see you. Turn around so people can see you. I just want to take um, a, a moment here to say, first of all, a few thank yous. And I got to start with uh, Father Michael for saying yes to God. And uh, to be able to be part of the Camino team, I want to thank uh, as well Rob, Jacinthe, and Lori, who is home. Also, Tristan, who is helping, and Kathleen as well. Just, uh, it is a privilege for us to be able to share and journey with you. We have been so blessed. I have no problem speaking for the whole team. You have blessed us, the grace, the joy, your yes that you said uh, since the beginning that we come together and you are witnesses to the entire parish here of the glory and what God has done. So thank you and congratulations once again. My heartfelt thanks to uh, to Marco for uh, who has been leading leading all of you for these past months and been doing this for by my side the whole time. Thank you, Marco. Thank you. To my brothers and sisters, with the hope of following Christ Jesus in His resurrection, let us bring our prayers and petitions to our heavenly Father for the church, that we may radiate the light of Christ each day and confidently live as daughters and sons of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the world, that the light of the risen Christ shining for all to see may guide all people to repentance and belief in the gospel. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the newly baptized, that they may faithfully follow Jesus and keep the light of Christ burning in their lives. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. 
for healing of hearts and relationships, that the risen Lord will open the path to reconciliation in families and communities. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all who are ill, especially those who are alone and have no one to pray for them, that Christ will heal the sick, give strength to those facing an extended recovery, and deliver the human family from COVID-19. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For our beloved dead, that they may share in the eternal life of the risen Jesus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. And for the intention of all our parishioners, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our Father, we bring these and all our prayers to you. Having Jesus from the dead, have taught us that all things are possible. Through your Son and our Lord, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please be seated. I just want to want to say it's it's been uh it's been an, uh, an amazing year for us it's been trying it's been difficult but in many ways it has been our best year ever as a church as a parish here at St Ignatius in terms of our outreach and the number of people we've been able to uh, uh to really impact uh in terms of you seeing the fruit of it here today, these, uh, these seven men and women who were received into the church today, this is why we exist. We exist to, to reach more and more people with the good news, the good news of Jesus Christ. This, as I said, has been a trying time, but it has been a wonderful uh, time as well. We've been, as I said, growing our impact and we want to continue to grow our impact. You heard me say, I want to double the number of people that we, we bring into the church in a, in, through the sacraments uh, uh, next year. That means doubling everything, you know, <laughs> doubling the number of people that we, that we uh, bring through Alpha, through our groups, through in kids ministry. That means doubling everything we do. And so that takes resources, that takes uh, hard work of my staff and our volunteers, and, and it takes uh, lots uh, of financial resources as well. If, if you're able to help us, it would be greatly appreciated. There are numbers, I think, uh, appearing on the screens that will uh, indicate how you can do that. The most, imp the most impactful way for us to receive your gift is through regular online giving at our website, stig.ca. If you could do, if you can do that, if you can sign up for a regular online giving, that that is a huge blessing for us, and I and I thank you for that. But I I also recognize that that not everybody's in a position to do that, and that there are other ways to give as well, giving of your time and your talent and your prayers as well. That that has a huge impact for what we do as well. So I want to thank you all for your generosity. Thank you for what you've been able to do and help us uh, to come to this moment uh, one year after this pandemic. But I, I also wanna thank you for your, your support going forward. And, and if, uh, if, that, if, if that continues and grows, then we too can, can continue and grow our impact, grow uh, the number of people who we bring to an encounter with Jesus Christ, our Lord. Thank you all for your generosity.
brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Exultant with paschal gladness, O Lord, we offer the sacrifice by which your church is wondrously reborn and nourished through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But on this day, above all, to love you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death. And by rising, restored our life. Therefore, Overcome, overcome with paschal joy. Every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up, for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith.
Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving his holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Ignatius of Loyola and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Christian, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O oh merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, to whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Jesus gave his prayer to his disciples. They've passed it on from generation to generation. We have received this prayer from those who have gone before us. So with them, with all our brothers and sisters in Christ, we can say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the kingdom power, power and glory are yours now, now and forever. forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. The Spirit. My brothers and sisters, let us offer each other an appropriate sign of peace. In a moment, I'm going to invite the, the, the neophytes, the newly baptized and newly confirmed, uh, along with their sponsors, uh, to, to come and receive communion ahead of everyone else. Uh, it will be, as I said, it's their first holy communion. So we want to uh, mark that in some way and invite them to come up ahead of everyone else. If uh, afterwards, once that is... Uh, once we have given them Holy Communion, Deacon Marco and myself will uh, have two stations at the, the head of the aisle here. We ask if you're coming up for communion that you please keep your masks on up until, with you, uh, up until you've received communion. Move over to one of the, the red squares marked on the, on the ground. There you can remove it and consume the host. 
if you're not uh, Catholic and you'd like to come up for a blessing, you can stay in your pews, but if you'd like to come up for a blessing, simply cross your arms like this over your chest and I'll give you a blessing rather than uh, the host. For those of you at home, I invite you to join with us in an act of spiritual communion. I will guide you through that prayer in a moment. Essentially, it's a prayer that, that expresses our deep desire to unite ourselves to Christ, uh, even though we can't do so sacramentally at the moment. I'll guide you through that prayer in a moment. Agnus Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Agnus Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Agnus Dei, Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. I invite you to join with me. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually, into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
free Hallelujah Death has lost its grip on me You have broken every chain There's salvation in your name Jesus Christ, my living hope Jesus Christ, my living hope Jesus Christ, my living Let us pray. Look upon your church, O God, with unfailing love and favor, so that renewed by the Paschal mystery, she may come to the glory of the resurrection. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated now for a moment. So I trust everyone has dried off from our blessing that we received. I was well doused again. Thank you, Deacon Marco. <laughs> um, I want to let particularly our people at home know that our church will be open from 12 to 3 today. Uh, you are welcome to come. We will also be having Holy Communion from 12 to 1 outside the church. And so, but if you after you want to come and stay and spend some time in adoration uh, with Jesus, you're welcome to be in the church. For the kids, if you prepared an Alleluia flag, please bring them with you when you come by the church today. We want to see them planted out front of the church um, to celebrate this Easter. The last thing I want to say, we've, or not the last thing, but throughout this time, we've mentioned the importance of prayer. Um, prayer for each other, prayer for our, our clergy, prayer for the church, uh, prayer for our new newly baptized um, I also want to let people know that for those of you that sent prayer intentions or left prayer intentions at the box at the back of the church or sent them into the parish, they were brought to the altar on Good Friday and have been sitting here 
um, for prayer throughout our Easter celebrations. Uh, I want to remind you the hardest part of all of this is as we leave the church, we are still asked not to gather on the steps. I know as we see new faces and familiar faces, we want to stop and chat and we need to ask you to unfortunately keep moving on and connect on Zoom. Um, so please don't gather on our steps. And lastly, I want to thank all of you for being here today in the church, at home and joining us. And I wish you all a beautiful Easter Sunday. Thanks, Amy. Uh, I want to also extend my thanks to, uh, to everyone who's been involved in, uh, in preparing for, uh, for all these, these celebrations uh, from last week, from Palm Sunday all the way through to today uh, and this afternoon when we uh, welcome people into our church this afternoon as well. It is, uh, um, it's an awful lot of work. It's taken weeks and weeks of, uh, of planning and preparation and then when the government changes things, that we have to plan and prepare some more. So, uh, but but uh, it's it's been an awful lot of work, and I am so so grateful for all the the staff and volunteers who have given themselves so much uh, so much of themselves to make this uh, truly beautiful uh, Easter triduum. It's called the uh, the this this Holy Week. Uh, wonderful in in so many ways, and such a blessing to me. They are. Um, they are to me a sign of God's goodness uh, at work. Those those uh, those volunteers, those staff who give themselves so much, uh, give themselves so much to our church and to to make this uh, a blessed time. I invite you to please stand. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May Almighty God bless you through today's Easter solemnity and in his compassion defend you from every assault of sin. Amen. Amen. And may he who restores you to eternal life in the resurrection of his only begotten endow you with the prize of immortality. Amen. Amen. Now that the days of the Lord's passion have drawn to a close, may you who celebrate the gladness of the Paschal Feast come with Christ's help and exulting in spirit to those feasts that are celebrated in eternal joy. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. And congratulations once more to, uh, to all of our uh, newly baptized. Go in peace, alleluia. Hallelujah.